Hello and welcome to Evolve Yourself podcast. I'm Lahaina. I'm a confidence and freedom coach and I am your host today. This is the space to share my learnings and life experiences in order to create thought-provoking conversations in a variety of topics from healing and coaching modalities to health hacks and entrepreneurial tips. This is a place for inspiration, sharing, learning, questioning, and exploring to lead you to your next breakthrough and the path to evolve yourself. So on the last episode, I spoke about understanding women and the feminine, which was so interesting for me, eye-opening. And this is one of my favorite topics. You know, we say that women are complicated and yes, we are, but also no, we are not. Um, And what I've been learning more recently is about understanding history, you know, the history of humanity, the history of our societies and how we ended up in the place that we live now. So if you're curious about that, this is a kind of a continuation because I came across this book. My friend sent me this PDF book and it's called The Heroine's Journey by Maureen Murdoch. So this book explores the unique path of the female and focus on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment that many women actually experience throughout their lives. So I so connected to this book and what it's about. And I've been talking to friends and a lot of my friends are on the very, very same path of self-discovery and empowerment and facing so many struggles and challenges. So I'll share about the book because it has literally blown my mind. And instead of you guys reading this like 300 pages book, I can bring a summary of what I found out. And yeah, if you want to go ahead and read the whole book, please, please go ahead. So you might have heard of The Hero's Journey. That's by Joseph Campbell. And he has a circle of the man's, a man going on this journey of, again, self, self-discovery and becoming the hero of his own journey and his story. And Maureen Murdoch asked Joseph Campbell, what about the women? How is their journey? And he was like, oh, no, the women is the prize. They're not part of the journey because they actually like almost like the end goal, right? When he becomes a hero, then he can have the, the woman, the prize. And she was so pissed off. And I agree completely because in modern society, we are not the prize. We are fighting our own battles. We are our own heroes. And as I said, women are really struggling at the moment. So another thing that I've been learning a lot about is the patriarchy and how our society works from bit by being built in a very masculine way so I want to bring to you some of the steps of the heroine's journey so what are some of the things that she goes through and faces throughout her journey so it's the journey of life so the very first step is the separation of the feminine and again that really connected and resonated for me because understanding that we are in a patriarchal society the very first thing that a little girl does is saying I don't want to be like my mom I want to be like my dad because I want to be successful I want to make money I want to go on adventure and a lot of the times the mother role is was not giving her that perspective perspective right and it we might be changing things at this point in time but that's how it's been for a really long time so the separation of the feminine might include separation from mother, separation from mother earth, uh, separation from mother nature. And the separation from mother creates what we call the mother wound, which is another topic that I absolutely love. And we're going to cover a bit later on these different steps of the journey. So so the separation of the feminine is because there is an innate fear of the female inferiority. Again, we have been hearing the stories like the Denzel in distress and all the, you know, the women that need saving or the feminine being emotional and being weak. So many young women become addicted to perfectionism, overcompensation and overworking themselves because um, they want to be more like the man. They want to be successful. They want to make the money. They want to have a career. They want to, you know, go out and go on adventures. So that really, really resonated for me. So. 
then we go to the second step, which is identifying the masculine to succeed and gather allies. So this is almost like, you know, the heroine's journey. So she needs allies. So it could be the father, any other man, mentors, could be a boss. Uh, and it could also include getting qualifications, getting a job, getting a promotion. So getting, identifying with the masculine and getting into the masculine way of being, which is focused, driven, uh, solution oriented right then step three is the road of trials or when she faces her dragons and demons and these are the literally the external challenges of the patriarchal model because our society does um encourage again the masculine energy it doesn't mean man per se but that masculine energy of succeeding producing results so when the heroine's come across her dragons and demons could be not getting the promotion it could be not never ever making enough money or same as men it could be having to work and take care of having to work outside and take care of the family and household having to be strong but also feminine which can be really confusing at times um there's a fake sense of you can have it all because again when we go out in the world there's so many challenges we face that we feel there's not um equality so what comes at this point is disappointment, exhaustion, and unfulfillment. Step number four, find success. So again, it's similar to getting qualifications, starting the business, building the household, operate in their masculine, which can feel really, really exhausting. But then it comes number five on the journey, which is awakening. And that could be awakening of the feminine and awakening of spirituality. So this is literally the journey that I've been on the last few years. And as women, we can see that the external su success does not feel as nourishing or as fulfilling as we thought. There is um, a certain burnout point. I don't want to go to work anymore. I don't want to do the work anymore. I don't want to get out of bed. And for sure, I have felt like this so, so many times. Even lately, I've been battling myself because it's almost like I don't want to do anything anymore, right? I feel exhausted from life, from always being an overachiever, from always being independent, from always going chasing after the things. Um, and then it comes number six, which is initiation. So usually going inter internally to the underworld, to the unconscious, uh, to the things that we have suppressed and pushed away. So there's a lot of us, again, on the healing journey, on the spiritual path, on the spiritual awakening path, on personal development journey. Um, and that's a really beautiful and crazy process and is not for the faint of heart you literally have to get have guts and courage to do so then after that there is an urgent earning to connect with the feminine and again I've been feeling this a lot so that's maybe why we see so many like women's circles in the moment and you know feminine dancing parties and courses and healing for women because then is the internal journey to go through our own psyche and our own shadow our own um, suppressed emotions and feelings and desires then step eight is healing the mother wound which i spoke a little bit about the beginning healing the mother wound has two massive components to it one is the whole feminine and again the relationship with the patriarchy but one is actually healing the relationship with our mothers because we did reject them from early in life because we said i don't want to be like you i want to be like my father um and that's you know that's a process again of looking at our own shadows our own wounds and healing the feminine first and if there is an opportunity to heal with our mothers directly then yes but it's not fully necessary at this stage uh and then the last two so number nine is healing the wounded masculine so again the parts that we felt rejected um the parts that we had felt, felt like we had to protect ourselves. So there is a healing with the masculine as well. And the lastly is integration, the masculine and the feminine. So I'll just open up a little bit more on the parts that I thought quite important and interesting. So for example, on the separation stage, this is so that at the very beginning, this is where the heroine feels a sense of dissatisfaction or relentlessness 
uh, with her current life. So leading her to embark on a journey of self-discovery. And this may involve leaving behind relationships, career, and other aspects of life that no longer serve. Um, this involves facing um, shadow aspects of self. So again, when we're doing the healing, when we're doing the personal development, and it's a lot about the self, the self-discovery, connecting with the shadows, um, loving and healing the shadow, confronting fears, and embracing vulnerability. I absolutely love Brene Brown. I can't get enough of her quotes and her speaking engagements because it's all about vulnerability and vulnerability is actually courage. So this can be a difficult and painful stage, but essential for the heroine to confront her inner demons in order to move forward. Uh, breaking up with the current reality. So this is the part where women feel a sense of dissatisfaction with their current lives and they embark on a journey of separation to find, it, find their true identity and purpose. So again, I feel that a lot with my clients, my coaching clients, a lot of the women that I speak with, a lot of my friends, a lot of my own reality. And again, realizing that the gift of success, which means external success with money, business, career, even looking perfect, even looking amazing all the time, it actually leaves us overwhelmed, drained, suffering from stress-related illness and wondering how did I get here? So that's literally a topic that I speak about all the time in my content and I see it with my clients and it's like waking up that day and saying, how did I end up here? This is not what I envisioned for myself and this is not what I expected. Uh and, and 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 realizing that at this point there is there has been a certain sacrifice of the body and soul. Another cool part of the book that I'll quote, and I realize this is related to people pleasing patterns. Um, so on the book is actually the heroine says, Okay, I'm here, what's next? And she looks for the next hurdle to jump, the next promotion, the next social event, feeling every free moment with activities. She doesn't know how to stop or say no and feels guilty at the thought of disappointing those who need it. Performing has become an addiction and there is an incredible high associated with your with their newfound power. I so connected to that. Okay, during the initiation, the heroine experienced a transformative journey that helps us to discover her true identity and purpose. So this is the best part, right? This is all the work uh, starts to pay off. And this may involve encountering mentors and guides. So again, coaching, mentorship, whoever is on this path that it really inspires you. And someone who offers the wisdom and support as well as facing challenges and obstacles that test the heroine in strength and resilience. So for me, this part really relates to personal development. You know, women may encounter mentors or guides who offer the wisdom and support there in, during their initiation. And it's going to be multiple people it's not one person and you see it's almost like one thing leads to another and so on and so on so this part is when a woman focuses on the process of her inner journey she receives she maybe she receives little recognition and less applause from the outside world the questions she asks about life's values make those who are committed to seeking out the external pitfalls of life uncomfortable so our task here is to heal our inner division that tell us to ignore the feelings, our intuition and, and dream images that inform us of the truth of life. So our nature, our natural wisdom, our ancient wisdom as a woman. Finally, the return stage, the heroine integrates her newfound wisdom and experiences into her everyday life. So the the, the journey is not linear, right? All of this can be happening on and off, on and off for different areas of life or for different sorts of awareness. Um, but, you know, when there is the healing, then it comes the integration part. So that's a newfound wisdom and experiences uh, into her everyday life and sharing her gifts with others and contributing to the world in a meaningful way. So again, that's why so many of us are taking roles as coaches or leaders, yoga teachers, Pilates structures, you know, somehow a way that we can actually feel like we're giving back. Uh, and this part is the sacred marriage of the feminine and masculine, when a woman can truly serve not only the needs of others, but can value and be sensitive to her own needs as well. 
<laughs> I love this so, so much. The journey requires courage, self-awareness, and a willingness to confront and transcend limitations in order to reach one's full potential. And this is scary as well. It's definitely an identity shift and transformation. And I don't know you, but when I hear, you know, step on your full potential, it's a bit scary because like, what does that look like? What does that mean? How do I know when I got there? And how do I get there? So overall, the heroine's journey offers a powerful, inspiring roadmap for, for women that are seeking to live more authentic and fulfilling lives and to embrace their own unique journey of self-discovery and empowerment.